Good morning. As we gather in prayer today, we're asked to remember Anna Rita, Mc Anna Rita McGlynn in a special way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we enter into these sacred mysteries, realizing God has so much that he wants to do through us, so much love he shows us first so that we could be that love for others, we want to really open up to, to receive his love today in, in a new way. So we call to mind our sins, preparing ourselves for these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. As we recall, year by year, the mysteries by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again. We earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out and said, go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the, prin in the prison, so they came back and reported, we found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Amen. Psalm 34. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord hears the cry of the Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard and from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. There's something essentially and necessarily corporate about salvation. In some ways you might think, well, if God came to save me, I've responded to it. I'm saved. I hope some others come along. Sure, that's corporate, but that's, again, not necessarily. If you enter into the heart of God, if you enter into the light, you're living in a way that your, your deeds would be seen by whom? By, by others. Of course, by God, yes, but by others, that they would be attracted to the light. I think that's a, an essential thing of, of, of what Jesus is putting before us, that whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. Others would say, wow, what's happening here? What's, what's different? Who is this God that allows someone to act and live this way? So fast forward from that, John chapter 3, right? The beginning of his gospel to the Acts of the Apostles, which we heard first. And, and they're, they're in prison. And they know what happened when their boss was in prison, right? Because when the Lord was in, in prison, it ended in death. They had this amazing opportunity to escape. The angel Lord appears, opens the door, says, Go. Go, run back, hide in Galilee. Don't let them find you again. No, go right back to where you were caught. <laughs> go right back in front of everybody. Continue what you were doing. Continue to tell people about Jesus. No hesitation, because their salvation is essentially corporate. It's about others. It isn't just, aha, God saved me. I'm safe. I can run and hide again. And I'll know I was faithful. I did my thing quietly. It just doesn't work in Christianity. You've got to go out there. And you're going to live in the light and it'll attract others. Could it land you back in prison? Could it make you a martyr in the end? All the apostles were martyred in the end, right? Like, yes, it's possible. But if it brings all this relationship with Christ, you've already died in him, right? And you start to pick up the language that you hear in Paul and, and you hear in the writings, right? It doesn't matter to me what happens now. If I could bring some others along, that's okay by me. Because salvation is essentially corporate. So just letting that kind of sit in your heart today. You know, is there times which we maybe keep our, our lights too, too much under a bushel basket, let it shine? Is there times we would prefer safety rather than kind of sticking our neck back out? Where's, where's the, the angel of the Lord opened up a door for you and said, I need you to go back, back into that, that, that cauldron, back into that arena where you were already arrested from. It will bring others to love the Lord. Then they will turn around and live with a understanding that their salvation is also corporate. And that's how our Christianity grows. So thank God for those who are witness to us and let's pray to be better witnesses to others. We stand and bring our needs before the Lord this day. We pray for the church throughout the world that continues to be a great witness to the love and the mystery of, of, of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for those who are in prison, 
unjustly, that the Lord might be able to bring people to advocate for them and set them free. We pray to the Lord. Lord our for places in our country and throughout our world that are suffering civil unrest, that the spirit of peace may fill those places and the people's hearts who are there. We pray to the Lord. Lord our for those who are sick and suffering anyway, especially those battling and recovering from, from surgeries, uh, that the Lord might bring them healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Anna, Rita, McGlynn, and for all of our beloved deceased, we pray to the Lord. Lord we bring to God the other prayers petitions which we carry in our hearts this day. For one of those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord Good and loving Father, we ask you to send upon us the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of courage and witness that we would always give glory to you in all our actions. Help us to find an answer to the prayers we bring to you today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us, and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, and the earth of the holy Lord, 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 you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our faith unto the Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, St. Mary Ann Cope, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Continue in prayer for an end of the pandemic. O America, full of grace, patroness of this nation. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day.